This symbol is one of the most important symbols in all symbology. It is the most prominent symbol on our one dollar bill. It is one of the most viewed symbols on earth. And very few people understand what it really means. I'm going to break it completely down from top to bottom and go through each element and attempt to explain it as, as fully and as clearly as possible. This is the symbol of all the mystery traditions. Okay, Very simply, it is the symbol of all occultism. Of course, it is Egyptian in its thematic representation, in its symbolic representation, it is Egyptian, and there is a reason for that. We see the elements of the symbol being the words Anuit Coeptus at the top. Then we have a pyramid with its capstone missing. The capstone is cut off, so it is an incomplete pyramid. Atop the pyramid, as a two-dimensional slit in the sky, it could be seen, a two-dimensional opening or a rift in the sky. From behind that, we see an eye. And that, that uh, eye is bathed in light. The pyramid is comprised of 13 courses of brick, the bottom of which has a date inscribed on it in Roman numerals, nine Roman numerals. There is then a uh, a sash with the words Novus Ordo Seclorum written on it at the bottom. So we have to understand each element. Each element is here not by accident, it is there by design and the makers of this of this sigil, because that's what this is. This is a sigil which is comprised of many symbols. Put nothing on it by accident. And everything has a meaning in this. So let's start to break down the symbols one at a time. Anuit Coeptus is Latin. It means, Anuit means to favor or to look favorably upon. Coeptus is an enterprise, an undertaking, or a project, a work, a work in progress, you could say. So Anuit Coeptus means he favors, could mean she favors, it favors, our project. It, he favors our work. He favors our work in progress. Okay? So, he favors our work is a good translation. Novus Ordo Seclorum is often hotly contested as to its meaning. Uh, novus means new, Ordo means order or way, and Seclorum is the debated word. So, I go to a, dic a Latin dictionary and I look up the word Cyclorum, S A E C O L O R U M. This is because people will say seclorum means of the ages. So I'm looking up the word cyclorum, and that means age, generation, people born at a time, race, present time, or age, century. So if this, if this phrase said the new order of the ages, we should see an A in between that S and E there. It would say Novus Ordo Cyclorum, but it says Seclorum. So clearly that's not the definition. Many people will say that that's what it means. It does not mean of the ages. Okay? The word Seclorum is put into a Latin dictionary, and then you see it is a word modification, a truncation. CL is derived from CUL. So an internal CL might be rendered by CUL, thus giving us seculorum. And seculum, seculi, is a noun that means world, universe, secular, temporal, earthly, or worldly affairs, cares, or temptation. So, clearly, I think this can be solved and agreed upon once and for all, so we don't have to hear this incorrect, connotatively incorrect translation, the new order of the ages. This phrase clearly says new world order. And that's it. That's what it says. Let's lay this to rest once and for all. Okay? So, he favors our work, the new world order. 
and you have an eye in the triangle looking out from another dimension of space into our realm, the light is pouring through the scene from that realm, and a pyramid is being built. So, he favors our work, the New World Order. What is, who favors the work, what is the work, and what is the New World Order? So, clearly, this is the being that favors the work. This project is the work that's being done. Okay, this is the incomplete project. This is the date that the project is could be begun or finished, depending on how we look at the seal. So, we have to understand a little bit about Egyptian cosmology and the main solar god, the solar disk, which we looked at as, as Horus, as, as Ra, Set is the dark incarnation of it. Really, all of these principles could be encapsulated as one solar god known as Aten, or Aton. Depending on the spelling, it could be spelled A-T-O-N or A-T-E-N. So, Akhenaten of 18th Dynasty Egypt was actually named after this. He, he's a pharaoh of 18th Dynasty. He brought in the concept into Egyptian cosmology of a one god that is the, the, uh, the overarching ruling aspect of everything, known as the Aten. And his, he named himself after this god. Akhenaten means the spirit of the Aten, the, the solar god. So that is the, the uh, being here, the Aten. Now that could mean a couple of things depending on how we look at this symbol. But let's just let it be seen as it is the solar principle, the solar god, the god of light, the bringer of light. So it could be also seen as the word Lucifer. Lucifer comes from two Latin words, lux meaning light, and fere, meaning to bear or to bring or to carry. So it is the bringer, the carrier of light. Now, this could mean two different things. We have to understand that Lucifer and the Aten are the same basic principle, the same symbolic principle, and they are essentially, they are a dual god. There is a light aspect of the sun god, the one that brings true light of awareness. And then there is the dark aspect of light. So one can be truly illuminated and really possess the light, really possess the knowledge. And then there is one who can be born into the dark light. Those who have knowledge of how things really work, but the way they're using it is for the ego. Being my will be done because I view myself as God and separate from everyone else and I am out there to manipulate and rule them. So either way you look at that symbol there, it is the Aten or Lucifer. It doesn't matter whether you're looking at that symbolically as as positive or negative, and I will go over both interpretations, both the positive and negative. However, it can both of in both aspects, this entity could be seen as Aten or Lucifer. Keep that in mind. If you take the compass and square symbol and place the apex at the top of this sim symbol, and the base at the same base level where, where, where uh, the pyramid meets the ground, you're going to see a very interesting thing emerge. If we just trace the five points of the compasses and squares, the two compasses, the two edges of the square, and then the middle part that, that both share, the, the, the line of symmetry between them. So we go down the compass edges, and we see that the compass points point to two letters. The, the two end letters of this sash, 
Okay? N and M. N from Novus, M in Seclorum. Then we go up the place where the square is used to measure from, the inside edge of the square. And we see that that also points to two letters, and they are also both on the opposite edge of this phrase, Anuit Coeptus. So we have the A in Anuit and the S in Coeptus. And now we come down the, the uh, horizontal axis of symmetry. And we see it reaches one letter that is exactly in the middle of this sash, the O from Urdo. These five letters, if rearranged, are an anagram for the word Mason, M-A-S-O-N. And this is the symbol of all masonry. It is the symbol of all builders. And who are the builders? We all are the builders. We are all collectively on this planet the co-creators of our collective experience. Whether we are doing that creation unconsciously or consciously creating our experience, we are the builders of this world. And this is what we've built it into, what we currently have right now. So, who are the builders? We are the builders. But there's two different types of masons. See, there are masons that build with stone. They build the pyramid upward. They're building with stone. If you connect these five symbols as they are connotatively used in this seal, they form an inverted skewed pentagram. And an inverted skewed pentagram, if you look into a dark occultic symbology, is always used as a symbol of paths. It's a symbol of paths, of promises made, to be something to be fulfilled, to be delivered upon completion of something else. So the, again, we saw that these four arms represent the material world depicted as the, the um, upward pointing pyramid, the brick, the physical object, and they are crushing the spirit, the fifth element, into the ground, burying it under the weight of the pyramid. See, the dark builders, the dark masons, those who are building toward a world of male domination, the blade. See, they're building with bricks. The bricks are people who are trapped in physical five sense reality and left brain prisonhood. They are those who can not change. They have one form and it's hardened. A brick was once malleable clay that could be shaped, molded, take different forms. It flows easily. Change comes easily to it. But when it is baked in the left brain, solar, male dominator consciousness, it becomes hard and immobile and immovable. It becomes a brick. And that's what the male dominator world is being built with. The bricks baked into one form. The unit form, those in unit form, cannot see what is, not see. They are, they cannot see, they are not sees, see? They are baked into one form, the brick, okay? And they're, they're being used as elements to build the blade world. And the blade world will be ruled by those who are in the light. They are the blade, the male dominator sorcerers. They have the light, but everyone else is in ignorance. And when you complete this structure, the light goes out from the scene. See, they're building the blade. If you complete this structure in brick, they have all the light, 
and the entire world is bathed in darkness. That in that symbol, the Aten or Lucifer represents the sorcerer, and he is completely trapped in ego. The ego bound consciousness. It's the I in the triangle. I am God, the sorcerer says to the world. And I will make everyone in this world and the entire world in my own image and likeness. But I will have all the light and the light will be blocked out to those in ignorance and in one form. And the male dominator world will be born into existence and it will bathe the world forever in darkness. That's the negative connotation of this symbol. See, you'll notice it's the blade without the chalice. See, these other three points make the chalice, but it's gone, it's ghosted. Just like it's been ghosted through human sacrifice, through the cremation of care. Right? It's been ghosted through the, the removal of the sacred feminine from the Trinity and through not caring about what goes on in the world. The sacred feminine is removed, it's, it's ghosted, but the male principle is embodied in stone. And that's the project, that the, the New World Order project that the Dark Masons, the builders with brick, are building into manifestation. Now, uh, there is a light side of this symbol. Again, he favors our project, the New World Order. If the true God of creation, the true bringer of light, the awakened neocortex, the prefrontal cortex, the opening of the third eye, the stone the builders rejected, the Christ consciousness, so to speak, the true bringer of light, right? The true aspect of Aten, the solar mind, right? If we, as the other kind of Mason, are trying to come, are, are trying to do the work that he favors, the true bringer of light, the true God of creation, and create the positive new world order, our job as the builders of this project is to remove the brick from the top down a little bit of time from those who we can help to work smaller groups gradually removing and helping people to change in larger and larger and larger groups and if that pyramid is raised to the ground is removed from the scene there's nothing to block out that light of creation. And it comes down and joins with the earth. So the earth is not bathed in darkness of the male dominator blade world. Instead, it's bathed in light because the bricks are gone. Those who cannot change are gone. They've made the change, the metamorphosis, the transfiguration, the transformation in consciousness. And they've been raised to a higher level of awareness. So that's the, op the opposite. The positive New World Order. Masons often tear stone down. And the light mason, want, the light builder, the light worker, wants to tear the stone down so the light comes down and join up with the earth to create the positive New World Order. And in that aspect, this is a powerful, magnificent symbol of the true mystery traditions. The object is to remove that pyramid of male domination and bring the light down to the earth. So we see that this is the symbol of Solomon encoded into it. The male aspect, here's the yin, uh, I'm sorry, the yang, light aspect of consciousness, combined with the feminine yin, dark aspect of consciousness, to create the seal of Solomon. As above, so below. The hermetic principle encoded into the seal, the seal of Solomon, so depicted there. But it is the body unified with the spirit within the temple of man, the mind, 
the sun and the moon, the left and the right brain, to create the stone, the philosopher's stone, the opening of the third eye, the pineal gland known as the stone the builders rejected because the dark builders reject that light of awareness and consciousness and they are trying to block it out by completing that pyramid in stone. So that is my analysis of that symbol and it's amazing when you get into it and really study it for yourself and really go deep into the symbology and it gets even better when you start to look at that date on the bottom of the pyramid because that date is MDCCLXXVI in Roman numerals and that totals 1776 and here's how it breaks down. This is a chart of the letters and their corresponding numerical values. So if you just do the math, M is 1000, D is 500, C is 100, you have it twice there, so you're up to 1700. L is 50, that's 1750. X is 10, which you have twice, so that's 1770. V is 5, that's 1775. And I is 1, 1776. So what we're going to do now is something called gematria. It is Kabbalistic numerology. It's an occultic form of numerology, and it's very simple. It is simple addition or counting of these numbers. And we can combine them in different ways, depending on which uh, numerals we add together. And we understand that all of the added values are identical, and they mean the same thing in occultic numerology. So 1776 is the number that we get when we add these Roman numeral values together. And what we, what we are going to do in this example is we're just going to take the 1 and add it to the 6 and leave these two 7s. So we get 777. Seven, seven. And anyone familiar with Judaism or Kabbalah may know that that is a symbol of God. It's a number that represents the, the trinity of consciousness in its perfect form. The 777 is the aspect of the divine in man. It is thought, emotion, and action, the three aspects of our consciousness having reached the place of the gods, the seven entities of the skies, the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. The seven gods that can be seen with the ancient world. A representation of the seven chakras of energy in the body. So, seven is a symbol of completion, perfection, and God. It tripled is a, is a representation of God. So, if we add the three sevens together, it totals 21. And two plus one, this is the parents and the child. The, the, the father and mother, the, sa the, the, the creator God and the sacred feminine, and the divine child. And then they, that totals three. Two plus one is three. So all of these values can be seen as identical or they mean the same thing. They are numbers that represent God or completion, perfection. The divine has been awakened and realized. So, they can be used interchangeably in systems of occultism. And again, three being the number of unity, of unification of thought, emotion, and action, the triune being, the three in one God, right? The Trinity. So, what I'm going to do in this uh, study of gematria is I'm going to take these letters because gematria is a combination of um, geometry and mathematics. Geo, geometry, gia, earth, the measure of things, the measure of the earth, the mother, right? And matria, mathematics, the mother science, after Maat from Egypt, the, the mother goddess. So gematria is a combination of geometry and mathematics. So we have all the elements in place. We have the math aspect is covered by the, um, by the um, 
uh, uh, Roman numerals that represent value or mathematics. And we have the shape that's given by the triangle shape or the pyramid shape. So we're just going to combine the two by taking, we have nine letters and we're given a shape that has three, three uh, vertices. So we're just going to duplicate the shape three times and we're going to place the letters at the vertices of the shape. So we'll start with M and put it at the top of the first triangle and then D, C at the base and then repeat it three times. M, D, C, C, L, X, X, V, I. And now we're going to substitute the numerical values for the Roman numerals. So we get this. We get 1,500, 100. 100, 50, 10, 10, 5, 1. So you see a pattern emerge there. At the top of the pyramid in every example, we see a, a clear pattern. 1,110. Now, in, in mathematics, those are known as powers of 10. Or powers of a 10. At 10. Powers of at 10. At the top of the pyramid. Because at 10, no matter how you look at it, is at the top of the pyramid. This is a play on words that works out in the English language and it is not an accident. These are perfect numbers of base 10 uh, uh, new numerology, base 10 mathematics. And the powers of a 10, the powers of a 10, are indeed at the top of the pyramid. At the bottom of the pyramid, we have 500, 100, 50, 10, 5, and 1. If we add those for each base, we have 600 at the base here and 1,000 at the top. 60 at the base here, 100 at the top. 6 at the base here and 10 at the top. We can then simply remove all the zeros because zeros don't add to anything in gematria. They, so they can be removed. So we see that it simply boils down to this. One's at the top, six is at the bottom. And now we can combine them into one pyramid. And you have at the top, one, 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 where the three pillars, the three aspects of consciousness, thought, emotion, and action, the three pillars of Freemasonry, at the bottom, triple six, 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 the number of beasts or base consciousness. And s noticing that 3 correlates to 777, seven, seven, because if you add 777, seven, seven, you get 21. If you add 2 plus 1, you get 3. So 777 seven, seven, and 3 are identical. So you could simply substitute 777 seven, seven for anything that totals 3, like 1 plus 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, so we could simply put 777 seven, seven up there and substitute for 111. They're identical because they both add to 3. So we have God at the top, the light, the beast or base consciousness of illusion and identification with the physical world at the bottom of the pyramid in, 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 captured in stone, in one form that cannot change. Illusion, ego, ego identification. So, if now we reduce them again. So we add seven plus seven plus seven, we get 21. We add six plus six plus six, we get 18. And this is what is meant by counting the number of the beast. That's what we're in the process of doing. It's a it's a prescription for gematria given in, in the book of Revelation in the Bible. We add 21, and of course, as we saw, that totals 3, the number of God, and 18, 1 plus 8 totals 9, the number of ego and illusion. Why is 9 the number of ego and illusion? Well, here's why. The n number 9 has very significant mathematical properties. And they are shown to us in addition 
to the number 9 and in multiplication of the number 9. So this side of the table is an addition table. This side of the table is a multiplication table. 9 plus 1 is 10. 1 plus 0 reduces to 1. We're simply adding the, the final result, the digits of the final result together. So look, we're back at where we started adding to 9. 1. So adding the 9 was like adding 0. Okay? 9 plus 2 is 11. 1 plus 1 reduces to 2. It adds to 2. So we're back to 2. So again, adding the 9 was like adding the 0. You do this with any number. 9 plus any number gets you back to the same number once the result is added together, or what is called in gematria, reduction. You're reducing a two-digit, two digit, or three-digit, or four-digit value down to one number. You will ultimately come back to the same value that you started with, because to add 9 is to add illusion, or to add ego, or to add base consciousness. And when you add the beast, when you add base consciousness, you can never affect any change in value. You bring no value to the equation. You are adding zero. You are adding nothing. You are adding illusion. Now, the multiplication of 9 is a different result. 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times 2 18. Add the 1 and the 8, you get 9. 9 times 3, 27. Add 2 plus 7, you get 9. 9 times any number, no matter what it is, you add the resultant digits, you will come back to 9. So what this is saying symbolically is multiplying base consciousness only gets you more base consciousness. You can never create anything new with ego and illusion and base consciousness. So, so this is uh, why 9 is the number of illusion and base, base consciousness, and as such, uh, it is uh, synonymous with 666, or the number of the beast. One thing I should mention is that the date 1776 is simultaneously the year that the Declaration of Independence was signed in the United States, uh, and it is a document declaring human sovereignty and uh, that our rights come from our creator, whatever we happen to uh, envisage that creator or that force as, and not from man. Uh, uh, but it also is the date of the birth of the Bavarian Illuminati uh, uh, order, um, and uh, that happened on May 1st, 1776, which is a, uh, a, a Luciferian uh, dark occultic Sabbath known as Walpurgisnacht. Um, uh, May 1st, May Day of 1776 is when the official Bavarian Illuminati, the Order of the Illuminated, came into being. So uh, there's a, a dualism even inherent in that date. You can look at the Dark New World Order, building upward from 1776 in earnest from the time when this uh, a dark occultic order came into manifestation and the object of the light new world order to bring the light down by removing the bricks and getting back to the understanding of personal sovereignty as encoded in the Declaration of Independence. Uh, when we look at it, we see that the, these two numbers, 777, representing God or completion or perfection, and 666, representing illusion or base consciousness, they total 9 and 3, and that brings us to the occultic number 93. To go from the illusion to the real, to go from the illusion to the true source of power, to go from base consciousness to divine consciousness or compassion. Um, and that uh, is the process of going from the nine to the three, because the nine drops away, it's illusion. Nine plus three is 12, one plus two goes back to three. So the nine falls away being illusion. To go from the nine to the three, and this is a number that represents will, will power. We make this journey by an act of 
personal will and it is an act of love. Love and will, we will see later, are identical forces.